Binabati ko kayo mga kapatid sa pangalan ng ating Panginoon. Ako po si Bishop Daniel Aritzia, tinatawag din na Bishop Dani, o kaya Bishop D. Inanyahan ko kayo na manood sa programang ito na pinapangkatan natin ng lectionary preaching. Ito ay ginaganap tuwing uh, Friday, 8 p.m. sa channel na ito, UMC TV PH o kaya United Media Channel. Ang nagabi po sa inyong lahat, ako po si Bishop Daniel Aritzia, tinatawag din na Bishop Danny o kaya Bishop D. At inanyahan ko kayo na manood sa programang ito sa UMC uh, TV, uh, United Media Channel, tuwing Friday, Alas 8 ng gabi. Ang talakay natin dito ay uh, lectionary preaching. Uh, alam nyo mga kapatid, sa ating mga iglesia, ang ginagamit nating Bible study, Bible study readings ay galing sa lectionaryo. Kumisa apat ito, kumisa tatlo, at ito ang pinanggagalingan ng ating mga sermon. Kaya't ang gagawin natin dito ay talakayan natin ang gospel readings uh, mula sa leksyonary sa, sa mga linggo na ating uh, titignan. At pagkatapos ay i-relate natin ito sa dalawa pang readings sa epistles at saka sa Old Testament. At ang talakayan natin ngayon ay ang Fourth Sunday of Advent. Alam niyo yung Advent ay may apat na linggo bago magpasko, kaya ito ay Fourth Sunday of Advent. At ang mga references dito ay Luke 1:39 to 55. At mayroon ding mga references na galing sa Old Testament. Micah 5, 2 to 5, at saka galing sa Hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 to 10. Ngayon yung Luke 1, 39 to 45, ayun yung istorya ni Maria na ina ng ating Panginoon uh, na dumalaw kay Elizabeth. Elizabeth naman ay naging ina ni Juan Bautista. Oh. At yung dalawang babae ay nag-uusap. Kailangan tignan natin ang buong istorya upang maintindihan natin ang kahulugan ng mga lectionary readings sa, para sa linggong ito. Oh. Itong is, mga istoryang ito ay tungkol sa dalawang babae nga kay si Maria at saka si Elizabeth. Oh. Ayun, si Elizabeth ay asawa ni Sekaraya na isang pare at uh, naging mother ni Juan Bautista. Si Maria naman, kilala natin, si Maria ay isang dalaga na naging asawa din ni Jose at naging ina ng ating Panginoon. Now, pwede natin pwede dating gumawa ng sermon tungkol sa dalawang babaeng ito, si Elizabeth at si Maria. Elizabeth and Mary were somewhat different pero uh, somewhat the same. Matanda si Elizabeth, mat- bata si Maria. Siguro, panong ito, mga 
13 to 15 years old lang si Maria. Uh, si Elizabeth ay napangasawa niya ang isang pare. Si Maria naman ay engaged sa isang carpenter. Uh, uh, pariyo din sila na wala silang anak. Si Elizabeth ay matanda na pero hindi pwedeng manganak. Uh, at si Maria dahil bata at wala pang asawa, uh, wala pang uh, kasintahan. Uh, ngunit, uh, may nangyari sa dalawang ito. Si Elizabeth ay dinalo ng Panginoon at nawala sa kanya yung pagka-curse ng barrenness at uh, naging buntis. Kahit na matanda na, naging buntis at siya naging uh, mother ni Juan Bautista. Si Maria naman, iba. Uh, sinabi sa kanya ng anghel na kahit na wala siyang asawa, uh, magiging ina siya uh, ng ating Panginoon. Kaya kay Elizabeth, dawala yung kanyang pagkahiya, removal of her shame. She would now be blessed only and with a child. Uh, si Maria naman, <laughs> hindi blessing ito, kundi pwedeng kahiyaan. Dahil the unmarried virgin will become pregnant. Uh, tignan natin kay Lucas uh, chapter 2, na when Mary and Joseph went to, Bet uh, to Bethlehem to be registered, they were not yet married. They were engaged uh, to be married. So, uh, tignan natin ang mga pwede nating pag-usapan sa mga bagay na ito. Uh, from the human point of view, hindi natin maintindihan. But from the divine point of view, maintindihan natin ang kahulugan ng mga istoryang ito. Both women receive special, extraordinary, miraculous blessings from God. Both pregnancies were gifts from the Lord. Both of their children would be instruments of God's for of God's uh, kingdom. Yung anak ni Elizabeth, I see one Bautista. He would be the one who will proclaim the coming of the Messiah. Yung anak ni Maria naman, I he would be the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah for Israel. Uh, so, ito makita natin. We know all that. Uh, pero Kung tignan natin yung istorya, yung dalawang babae, hindi nila alam. Oh. And yet, somehow, the meaning of what was happening to them was made known to them by God. Or more accurately, by the Holy Spirit of God. So, tignan natin. Listen to the reading from Luke. Uh, 1, 39 to 45. A short time later, Mary hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went to Zechariah's home where she greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby moved within her. The Holy Spirit came upon Elizabeth. Then in a loud voice, she said to Mary, God has blessed you more than any other woman. He has also blessed the child you will have. Why should the mother of my Lord come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, my baby became happy and moved within me. The Lord has blessed you because you believed that he will keep his promise. From the womb, 
before he was born, kilala na ni Juan Bautista ang ating Panginoon. And he had respect for the baby that was in Mary's womb. Through the Holy Spirit then, Elizabeth is led to recognize Mary as the mother of my Lord. She pronounces a blessing on Mary. God has blessed you more than any other woman. Kaya may dalawang babae ito. Isang matanda, isang bata, but in, a, in unexpected ways, God uses them for the fulfillment of God's purposes in this world. Now, tignan natin. In a world of men, God came down on two women. After Elizabeth and Mary, we can no longer say that women were not important in God's kingdom, that God uses only men. Elizabeth and Mary became the forerunners of the liberation of women from being the oppressed and also the liberation of men from being the oppressors. So, as God used Mary and Elizabeth long before ego in Palestine, ginagawit din ng Panginoon ang mga babae ngayon. Kung to, alalahanin natin ang mga babae ng ating iglesia, si Mrs. Manuela Valencia, Dr. Patricinio Ocampo, Dr. Prudencia Pabro, Dr. Uh, Is Mrs. Esperanza Bailin, Dr. Nora Lucero ng Bible Society, marami pa. Ang pwede nating uh, uh, sabihin dito. No longer can we say that our church is only a man's church. The barriers of sex discrimination are down and banished. Hopefully forever. Because many years ago in Palestine, ginamit ng Panginoon ang dalawang babae. Isang matanda, isang bata. Elizabeth and Mary, how precious you are to us until this day. Ayun. Uh, ano pa? Uh, ang ma uh, malalaman natin dito, ginagamit ang Diyos, ng Diyos ang mga mahina, ang mga walang kapangyarihan upang matupad at masunod ang mga hangarin ng Diyos para sa sanglibutan. Clear na clear ito sa Bible. Uh, Ginagamit ng Diyos ang mga may hina. Ginagamit ng Diyos ang mga pulubi, mga pobre, uh, mga walang kakayahan, uh, ang mga salita tungkol sa pag-ibig, compassion, mercy, uh, ay para sa kanila. Contrasted with the powerful and the rich who receive words of stern warning and judgment. Sabi ng ating Panginoon, Blessed are you poor. Sinabi rin niya, Woe to you who are rich. Kaya sa mga poor, helpless children, He said, Allow the little children to come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to people such as this. Pero sa mga mayayaman at sa mga mga kapangyarihan, anong sinabi niya? Sabi niya sa kanila, Away from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Itong mga idea na ito ay nakikita natin sa awit ni Maria na sinasabi natin ngayon na pangalan ay Magnificat. Okay? So, listen to some of the song. Some from the Song of Mary. The Lord 
has used the powerful to scatter those who are proud. God drags strong rulers from their thrones and puts humble people in places of power. God gives the hungry good things to eat and sends the rich away with empty hands. Kailan kaya natin ma malalaman, ma paintindihan na it is not the powerful but the meek who will inherit the earth. Kailan natin kaya maintindihan that as far as God is concerned, salvation and security will not come from centers of power like Jerusalem, but from small, insignificant towns like Bethlehem. Kailan kaya makit natin malalaman ang katotohanan that the truth that Christmas wants to make clear to us that finally salvation and praise come for the whole world has become a reality in and through the birth of a small child and not because of uh, kings and rulers of this world. King Herod of Jerusalem was not able to destroy the child. Likewise, kahit na sinong Herod ngayon sa panahong ito, they will not be able to destroy the Christ child and prevent the good news of peace to spread from Bethlehem throughout the whole world. Pero ang problema natin ay sa Jerusalem pala tayo pa rin tayo tumitingin hindi sa Bethlehem. Kaya, kung nagsisirubon tayo, how do we relate this to the other readings? The reading from Micah focuses on Bethlehem, not the most significant city in Judea, but becomes the birthplace of the Savior of the world. We can actually preach on the power of insignificance. The reading from Hebrews focuses on the futility of sacrifice and offering. Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ has become the ultimate offering to end all sacrifices. When we trust in Him, when we believe in Him, and we serve Him, these are more important than any other sacrifice and any other offering. Ang ibig sabihin nito, Si Jesus ang ultimate offering para sa atin at para sa buong mundo. Mula sa Davao Episcopal Area dito sa Spotswood Methodist Center, and from my own family, Dr. Lay, RJ, and Pearl. I bring to you greetings, beloved people called United Methodists in the whole of the Philippines. In the spirit of the Christmas season, I invite you to come together in the name of Christ, promoting peace, unity and harmony amongst all of us. Mga kapatid, tayo ay kumaharap sa maraming pagsubok. Tulad dito sa Mindanao for peace at sa buong Pilipinas at sa ating minamahal na United Methodist Church in the whole world. I pray that we will continue to be one church united in the Lord Jesus Christ. At tayo, mga kapatid, ay patuloy na nagmamahalan. Let us remember that God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus our Lord. 
Ngayong Pasko, inaalaala natin ang pagmamahal na yan ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Pagmamahal ni Kristo na siyang nagpakasakit sa atin sa krus ng Kalbaryo. In this season, we remember that He was born and He came to give life and to give it more abundantly. Friends, as one family, isang pamilya na nagkakaisa, masayang naglilingkod kay Kristo. Tayo ay humayo at gumawa ng kanyang mga lagay. This is the main mission of the church, my dear friends, and therefore, as one united family, let us go, therefore, and make disciples. Isn't it that this is the main mission of the United Methodist Church? Let us go into all the communities of the Philippines. This is what we are doing here in Mindanao, in the Visayas and in the Bicol region. Kaya nga, sa diwa ng Kapaskuhan, ako ay nakikisa sa inyo sa masayang pagdiriwang. Pagdiriwang dahil merong Diyos na nagmamahal sa atin. Christ is born not only in a manger in Bethlehem, but into our hearts and amongst our families. Again, my friends, I greet you all a happy Christmas and a blessed New Year. God bless the United Methodist Church. God bless the Philippines. Baguio City First UMC is the first United Methodist Church within the city here in Baguio. And actually, not only here in Baguio City, but in the Cordillera, the whole Cordillera. And uh, we support almost 14 churches, and all of them are the churches of Baguio City First United Methodist Church doing their mission. And they have that vision 2020 to have a 20 United Methodist Church within the Cordillera District. And we have these three worship services every Sunday. The 8.30 worship is the Ilocano service, the English worship service. And our Vesper community, it is a contemporary worship style in the millennial age that we have. Every Sunday, we, we celebrate the Lord's table every Sunday in all our uh, worship services on the three services that we have. We also have our youth ministry. We call that our uh, hotspot community every Friday night at 7 p.m. to cater all the students from uh, different uh, universities and schools. And Baguio City is a very unique church because it is a multicultural, multi-language community. Pampangos are here, Ilocanos are here, Pangasinenses are here, uh, indigenous people are here, and even Bicolanos and Visayas are here. And most of the time, this is also a most visited church in the whole, in the whole church of the UMC in the Philippines, I think, because every Sunday, we have uh, visitors from different uh, places. So this is very unique and very happy church, but despite of our diversity, we can unite because of the love and grace of God. Different, uh, different of uh, attitude, character, families, culture, but we unite together. So you can feel uh, the unity of love and grace of God in, in the midst of our diversity. This is the family of Baguio City First United Methodist Church. We are having our family fellowship together, having a luncheon together and a fellowship after a while together and having that uh, color family that what we call that every, every 
the people here are belong in the God's family and we are formed as a one God's family here in the church, here in Church of Baguio City First United Methodist Church. We invite you all, welcome, this is your family, this is your home here in Baguio City. You have your home here, your spiritual home here. Then you can experience the goodness, the greatness, the graviness presence of the Lord through our worship, through our service, even our witnesses and a fellowship together. So once you are here in Baguio, our door is so very open to all of you. Welcome to Baguio City First United Methodist Church. Pagbati mula sa College of Bishops na imbag na Paskwayo amin, Kakamsat. Maligayang Pasko sa inyong lahat. Malipayong Pasko kaninyong tanan. Merry Christmas! Mula sa Macario C. Nabia Senior Memorial United Methodist Church, Kalumpit Bulacan, bumabati sa inyo ng Isang Maligayang Pasko ang nandigong bagong taon! Gikan sa Madagayaon nga kayutaan sa Mindanao, kami nagapanamyaw kaninyo sa usa ka malipayong Pasko o Madagayaon nga bag-ong tuig. Sa ngalan po ng aking mga kasama sa Philippine Central Conference sa United Methodist Church Secretariat, ay amin pong ipinapaabot ang aming pagbati ng maligayang Pasko at naragsak ng natal na nga baro at awan nyo amin na po. Mula sa Mindanao, kasama ang mga kapatid nating lumad, binabati namin kayo ng Maligayang Pasko at Maligong Bagong Taon mula sa National UMYFP. Iniimbitahan namin kayong manood ng Youth Seat, Usaping kabataan, kwentuhan at istoryahan. Siyempre, every Friday, 8.30pm sa United Media Channel app.